welcome to this video from in 28 minutes thanks for helping us provide awesome learning experiences to more than 300,000 learners across multiple platforms udemy safari and pact let's welcome our lead instructor rangarao karanam welcome back when you look at a lot of microservices architectures you would make extensive use of queues in this video we'll talk about why is a queue needed we know that with queue you would be able to use something called asynchronous messaging why is asynchronous messaging important what are its advantages let's look at that in this specific video let's consider a simple example right so we have an order service so basically a customer places an order through the order service and what are the things that we would want to do when we receive an order? We would want to update the stock. We would want to send an email to the customer. We would want to send an SMS to the customer. As well as we would want to start informing the packaging and delivery team. So those are the important features that we would want to accomplish. One way I can do that is to design one component which does all these stuff together. So I write a simple Java application where as soon as I as soon as the order button is clicked I update the database I send an email I send an SMS I send a request to the packaging service the other option is to have a queue in between so whenever an order service receives an order it places it on the queue and and you have independent services listening on to the queue as soon as they see the order event the stock service takes the data from it and updates the stock. The email service looks at it and sends an email. The SMS service looks at it and sends an SMS. And the packaging service looks at the order and it creates all the stuff it would need to initiate the packing and delivery request. So these are kind of the two architecture styles that you can use to achieve this functionality. If you are a small organization receiving hundreds or thousands of orders then having a simple application architecture might be very good choice for you but when we are talking about a large scale let's say i'm talking about amazon receiving millions of orders you would want to have a lot of flexibility and that's when you would go for the second kind of architecture where you bring a queue in now i've not really answered the question what are the advantages of having a queue in between let's start with one of the scenarios let's say the sms service is down for a little while it's down for a few minutes and if the order service is directly calling the sms service what would happen you will not be able to send the sms and that means you might want to cancel the order because all these things might be in a single transaction so in a simple application let's say the stock service was not able to update the order for a little while or i was unable to send an email or i was unable to send a service request to the package service if i was doing it synchronously through a small web service call or directly inside the application then what would happen what would happen is that the order request would fail and we would ask the customer to reinitiate the request. We might need to say, try after a few minutes, try after 10 minutes and things like that. But when it's asynchronous, all that the order service needs to do is put a request in the queue. And whenever the SMS service is up, it would listen to that particular event and it would send the request out. So the most important thing is it's more reliable because even if one of these services are down, when you receive the order, as soon as the service is back up, they can take the message and process it and make sure that everything is running fine. The other important thing which it provides is scalability, right? If you have all this done by the same server, let's assume that on a specific day, you'd want to send 100,000 SMSs. You know that you are going to send a lot of SMSs or a lot of emails. What I can do is I can increase the number of instances of the SMS service or the email service so that whatever messages come in, I would process them very, very quickly. With the queue architecture, I would have that flexibility. 
I can create as many instances of these individual services I would as I would want, and I would want I would be able to easily process the different things that are present in the queue. The third important thing is it's easily testable. Each of these services have independent requirements, and so it's very easy to test each one of them. And obviously, it's more maintainable because this would be smaller applications. So typically, we go for queues in our architecture when we would want huge amount of scalability. Small applications, you might want to keep the architecture simple. But when we are talking about applications which serve millions of users, you'd want to use event-driven architectures based on the queues. Some of the popular queues are RabbitMQ and Nav, Kafka. These use varied kinds of protocols, but the important thing is the concept remains the same. A queue helps you separate the thing which is generating the event from the services which are processing the event. The services which are processing the event need not be available all the time. And in case there is huge amount of load, you can increase the number of services which are processing the events very, very easily. The other flexibility we get is making changes is very, very easy. So in addition to these, let's say I would want to do something else. Then I would not need to touch any of these services. I just need to create a new service, which is listening on to the queue for the specific event it is interested in. All these features makes it imperative that whenever you have requirements of processing things from a huge number of users, you would want to typically go for architectures involving queues. In 28 Minutes is providing awesome learning experiences to 300,000 learners across platforms like Udemy, Safari Online and Pact. We have clogged million hours of learning in the last few months. The question is, what do you want to learn next? We are building solutions to help programmers at all levels. You can learn programming with our awesome courses on Java, Python and JavaScript. You can learn full stack development with REST APIs and microservices with a wide range of frameworks like Spring Boot, Node.js, React, Angular and Spring Cloud. We have 200 plus videos to help you start your journey from a programmer to a software architect. We have videos to help you learn frameworks, industry trends, including things like microservices, learn the best practices in architecture, design and code quality. Thanks for watching. Keep learning in 28 minutes.